Next, Goldman Sachs, part two. Last night, NewsHour economics correspondent Paul Salman examined how the Wall Street investment firm makes its money. Tonight, the government's role in the company's success. It's all part of Paul's ongoing reporting, Making Sense of Financial News. Across from the construction site that was once the World Trade Center, Goldman Sachs' new world headquarters. To help foot the two-plus billion dollar construction bill, Goldman got New York City and state to bless a $1.65 billion tax-free so-called Liberty bond issue, plus another $66 million in job grants, tax exemptions, and energy discounts. And yet the same firm just reported the most profitable year in Wall Street history, prompting protests when it channeled most of those profits to pay salaries and bonuses. It was a year of horrible PR which saw Goldman and its CEO, Lloyd Blankfein, vilified. Everybody have that now? By everyone from passers-by, commenting on painter Jeffrey Raymond's portrait, to Glenn Beck on the right, blasting Goldman's profits. Goldman Sachs up 65%, even though they took over $10 billion in government aid. <laughs> to The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, voicing almost exactly the same skepticism on the left. Goldman Sachs will have a profit that we estimate of about $12 billion last year. Let me see if I got this straight. The only people who have fully recovered from the financial meltdown are the ones who caused the financial meltdown. In a recent NewsHour story, experts explained how Goldman made most of this money by trading for its own account. For details, you can watch or read the story online. But this story is about the claim that Goldman has been getting most of the money to trade from you and me via our government. Nomi Prince, a 10-year veteran of Wall Street trading, left Goldman after 9-11. First, of course, they received $10 billion in TARP money. Even though a year later they can say, well, we didn't really need it, they really needed it. They needed it, says MIT's Simon Johnson, who's working on a book about the undue influence of Wall Street, because during the panic of 2008, they were on the brink. Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley had a problem, which is they were about to fail, and everyone felt that this was coming, and they couldn't borrow easily from the Fed because they weren't banks. Then the authorities had a vision of salvation, according to Johnson. And they said, aha, we'll, we'll turn them into bank holding companies so they, get, they have access to this cheap money from the Fed. Bank holding companies own or control one or more U.S. banks. Though no one from Goldman would give us an interview, CEO Blankfein recently told the Financial Crisis Commission that the firm wasn't necessarily on the brink after Lehman Brothers collapsed in mid-September 2008. That weekend when we became a bank holding company, the next day we capitalized ourselves in part privately with Warren Buffett, and the day after that we did a capital raise for five and three quarter billion dollars, which we could have made a hot, hot higher. We had access to the capital markets, and we could have made it more, and we weren't relying on that government help. But others are dubious that Goldman could have raised so much money without government help. You don't go to the Fed on a Sunday night and say, I really need to become a bank holding company now because, um, you know, I want to help out all my competitors. You know, you go because you need capital, and this is a way to do it. Because the government could only give them money if they were a bank or bank holding company as opposed to an investment bank. Right. And basically, if you hold securities or anything else, I think including your car, if you're Goldman Sachs at this point, you can take that to the Fed and mortgage it and use it as a, to get credit. And then all your liquidity problems go away. And, and actually, a lot of your solvency problem goes, goes away as well because people really start to believe in you again. Investment advisor Jeff Mackey, however, thinks it's unfair to single out Goldman. The entire system was teetering on the brink. When you get a tidal wave coming, it doesn't discriminate between the sinners and the winners. It's going to drown us all. When we bailed the system out, we saved Main Street as well as Wall Street. We didn't just save Goldman Sachs. No, we didn't. But saving Goldman by giving it access to money is only one thing the government did. And the other thing is because they were a bank holding company, they now would receive um, ultimately FDIC protection in terms of guaranteeing new debt that they would be able to raise. Indeed, Goldman has raised $28 billion in the past year, enough money to pay back TARP. Problem is, the money is at least implicitly guaranteed by the government. So why should we average Americans be responsible for Goldman's fate? We asked that question to Goldman defender Goldman Jeff Mackey. It, it doesn't bother you that they are too big to fail and therefore we 
the U.S. taxpayers have to bail them out if push comes to shove? I don't, they're not too big to fail. They're too good to fail. Will Chamberlain said it best when he said nobody roots for Goliath. Everyone's out to get Goldman Sachs because they're the best. They make money and they survive in this environment when other people aren't. Goldman investor Warren Buffett told Bloomberg TV that he agrees. I'm very happy with the way Goldman has performed. I mean, they have, they have, they, that with place way, is very well run. With the way Blankfein has performed. Oh, I, think he's been the, I don't think he could have had a better manager than Lloyd Blankfein. But wait, says corporate governance lawyer Jay Eisenhofer. Not only did the government provide TARP money and a guarantee, it also bailed out AIG, which owed Goldman Sachs $12.9 billion. A great deal of Goldman's success can be attributed to the AIG bailout. That's a big part of Goldman's success this year. If Goldman hadn't received the money indirectly through the AIG bailout, you know, Goldman wouldn't have had the year that it had. But beyond the billions in bailouts and guarantees, there's yet another way the government has aided Goldman Sachs. And it may be the most important of all, says President Reagan's budget chief, who later spent years on Wall Street, David Stockman. They have the Federal Reserve working for them. Goldman's status as a bank holding company means it can borrow money directly from the Fed. Moreover, in its wisdom, the Federal Reserve has driven interest rates down to 10, 15, 30 basis points, so their cost of funding is zero. So you mean Goldman Sachs borrows money from the Federal Reserve at a tenth of a percent, a quarter of a percent, takes that money, invests in U.S. Treasury securities at three and a half percent, four percent. Three and a half percent, exactly. And they make the money just on the spread. And the money is simply being recirculated from the Fed back to the Treasury. That's exactly right. But mainly, Goldman raises money privately through the markets. And because the Fed is keeping interest rates so low, that private money is also very cheap, as long as the markets think the government will never let Goldman fail. Goldman Sachs so recently was borrowing between 100 and 150 basis points. That's one, between 1 percentage point and 1.5 percentage points above what the government was borrowing. In the aftermath of the greatest financial crisis since World War II, that, that's incredible. <laughs> that does makes no sense, unless Goldman Sachs is almost as good a risk as the U.S. government. Then it makes complete sense. And that's what the market is saying, and the market is thinking, and the market is right. And so it can borrow at 1.5% interest for short-term money, make bets with that money, and if they pay off, it can make a fortune and pay big bonuses. Yes, absolutely. Make money, get the bonuses, take the money and do it again. Don't even roll it running. You don't have to run because nothing's going to happen to you. Or as David Stockman puts it, there has never been uh, more of a, uh, uh, you know, e easy uh, money uh, scam that I can remember in uh, modern uh, economic history. But hey, says former hedge fund manager Jeff Mackey, in the end, if this is a problem, it's the government's, not Goldman's. Amen. That's exactly how it works, and that is a problem. You're pushing on a string if you're just going to give the banks free money and expect them to do anything other than that which makes them more money. How do you fix that? Well, you can either make a bunch of laws as thick as a phone book, or you can raise interest rates. Stop giving the banks free money. A bunch of laws or higher interest rates. Not an especially attractive pair of options for Goldman Sachs, and currently the subject of considerable debate in Washington.